Hello guys, welcome back. So as of now, we have discussed a lot about constructor chaining and we also have seen what are the limitation of constructor chaining as well. But as I promised in the beginning of the tutorial that we are going to discuss about a real-time scenario. We're going to create a real-time scenario using the constructor chaining and we're going to see how it works. Okay, so guys, as you can see right now, I'm in the Eclipse right now and I have a simple student class right over here. Um, so what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to create few variables for my student class. So I'm going to create int id. Uh, I want to have a student name, so I write string name and I want to have a city of the student. So I'll have a city variable over here as well. Okay, so right now what I need to do is I need to create a constructor which will initialize this particular variables. So basically I'm going to create two constructors right here. One constructor should have ID and name as its argument. And another constructor should have ID, name, and city. I mean, all the variables as this argument. Okay, so let's go ahead and create that first. Okay, so my first constructor here will initialize the first two variables, that is ID and name. And my second constructor will initialize all these three variables called ID, name, and city. Okay, so let's go ahead and create our constructors first. Okay, so here I'm creating my first constructor. I write a student, oh, I misspelled it, a student, and over here, I'm going to give uh, two variables, as I said, int id and string name. All right, so this is our first constructor, and this should initialize the first two variables, okay? So we have already discussed in our first tutorial how to set these non-static non variables with the help of local variables if there is a ambiguity, okay? So here I'm going to use my this keyword, so this.id equal to id, this.name equal to name. And guys, if you don't understand it, please follow my first tutorial of this series, all right? Now let's go ahead and create another constructor. So, so I'll just copy paste it, I'll just do a control C and I'll paste it right here to save my time. Okay, that's good. Now this particular constructor will have an extra field called string city. Alright. Now let's initialize this as well. So I'll say this dot city equal to city. Great. Okay, so now I want to create a display method in order to display all these variables value. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a display method right here. So I'll say void display. Okay, and in this display method, I'll just have a print statement. So I'll write this out here. I'll do have a control space. Sorry, I misspelled it. Okay, so right now, what I'm going to do right here, I'll write uh, id and I'll put the ID over here. Then I'll have name. I want to display name right here. So I'll put name and I'll put the variable name here, name. And I want to print the city name as well. So I'll write city and I'll write here city as well. Okay, this looks good. Right now, I just want to avoid a typo here, so I'll write a colon and I'll write a colon here as well to make it uh, looks a little bit better. Great, now this looks good. Okay, so right now, as of now, you know, we have we have three variables, id, name, and city, and we have two constructors. First constructor says id and name, and the second constructor I mean, by the help of the second constructor, we can set ID, name, and city. And we just have a display method right here, which will display all the variables value, you know, which we set through the constructors. Okay, uh, fine. Now, the next step is pretty straightforward. We are just going to create a student class object. Okay, so in order to do that, I just need to create a man method right here. So I'll write, um, 
main and I'll do a control space. Okay, this is a main method right now. And over here, I want to create a student class object. So I'll write student a is equal to new student. Okay, here I want to use my first constructor. My first constructor is over here. You can see just right here. Uh, my first constructor except id and name as its argument id is integer and name is string so let's go ahead and give the value right here and let's see what will happen while we'll run this particular program so uh, i'll put id over here for example one and ram i'll put a village so i'll write a b h i l s h okay great uh so right now if i will save and run the program uh what will happen okay um, these two particular variables will be set through the constructor. I mean, using the first constructor, these two variables will set to ID and name, right? Okay, that's great. And I want to display that as well. So if I want to display that, I want to use a method called display. That's great. Okay, so right now let's run the program and let's see our result. Okay, so ID is one, name is Avilash, and CD is null you can see a null right here that's because we are not setting the city okay we are setting only the id and name but guys if you look over here uh, there is a kind of uh, it doesn't look good because there is no space right here um, in between the id result and the beginning of uh, name first later right so we can give a space right here in our display method uh, we'll write id and we'll write name and we'll write city. That's great. And right now let's go ahead and run it again. This looks good. Um, great. All right guys, so right now let's go ahead and create another object using the second constructor. I mean the one right over here. Okay. So in order to do that, we need to pass three variables right here called ID, name, and city. Okay, and both these variables will be set to our non-static variables, isn't it? So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll write student and we'll write is2 equal to new student. And over here, I'm going to specify all my three arguments right here. So my first argument is ID. I'll write one, sorry, a two and my name suppose i'll write abhipsa and uh, for and for city i'll write uh, uh, for example bhubaneshwar all right so right now let's display it again so i'll write s2 and display and let's see what's there in the output this time so i'm going ahead and run this once again and bam so we got our ID, we got our name, we got our city as well, right? Because you, we are setting all these three variables through our constructor, I mean through our second constructor right here. Okay guys, but you might be wondering right now, where is this keyword? Where, when you are going to use that? <laughs> so if you are doing it, so we're going to do it right now. So right now guys, just have a look in the student class, right? For example, guys, I'm going to create the student class object using this particular constructor, but I'm going to delete the first two line of the score. Great. So right now we're going to have only CD right here. So whenever we are going to use this particular constructor, we, we, are, we are passing ID, name and CD, but only we are setting the CD right here. But we are only going to setting the user input CD to the non-static variable of this particular class. So obviously the first two variables will be null by default because we are not at all setting it. So let's go ahead and run it once again. So if I'm running it once again, let's see what's going to be happen. And let's see over here, the ID is zero, the name is null, but the city is Bhubaneswar, but we are providing everything right here. We are providing an ID, we are providing a name, and we are providing the city as well. But why it is zero and null? So this is also we have discussed in the first tutorial because we are not at all setting the ID and name to our non-static variables. So, 
So by default, the integer default value is 0 and the string default value is name. That's why we're getting 0 and null. But guys, we're getting CD as Bhubaneswar just because we are we are setting the CD right here in a constructor in this particular line. We are passing Bhubaneswar as a user input and this CD comes here. So the CD became Bhubaneswar and our non-static variable uh, is set to the city over here which is Bhubaneswar, right? That's why we're getting Bhubaneswar in the city output but the first two variables are becoming 0 and null, right? I hope you guys are clear. But right now what I'm going to do while I'm using this particular constructor the three parameter, con the three parameter constructor I want to display all the variable but not by setting the variables like this way. I want to use the this constructor call. I mean the one that we discussed all through the last two tutorial. So I'll have a this call right here and whenever whenever the const I'm calling this particular constructor I want this constructor to call this constructor right so whenever this particular constructor will be used this constructor will be called by this particular constructor right so how we're gonna do that I have already told you right we just need to use this particular constructor right here because this particular constructor sets ID and name so I'm going to use it okay so this particular constructors first uh, parameter is ID so I'll write ID right here and the second parameter is name right I'm getting the name through this particular name right so I'll write name over here as well okay so what will happen when I'll have a constructor call for three parameters ID name and city it'll call this particular constructor so the flow will come first to this particular line so it's asking for ID and name ID is of which type integer type name is of which type string type so is there an integer in the string parameter constructor in our class yes it is available right here so match found right so the flow comes here and right now it is going to set the ID whatever the ID that we are setting to our input and it is going to set the name as well whatever the whatever the name we're going to send through our input right and finally it is just going to initialize the first two variables right now after finishing the work right here what will happen it will go back again to the previous constructor which called it right so the that constructor is this particular one so after this particular line the rest of the line will be executed right so after that there is only one line over here this is this dot cd equal to cd so finally the city variable will be also set to the non-static city variable right and finally we'll be going to get all the result by using the third constructor all right guys so now let's go ahead and run this program once again and let's see either we're getting the output that we have just discussed okay so I'm going ahead and run it once again and I'm clicking OK over here and bang we're getting the ID name and city everything right over here so this is how you're going to use the this call the this constructor call inside your class inside your project okay so this is pretty simple this is pretty straightforward but sometimes it comes really really handy so guys do remember it it is really an important concept okay so this is it for now see you in the next video